Hello everyone and welcome to Super User Channel. In this video, I'll recreate this facade in Revit. This elevation was designed by HK Architects for a residential complex. The architect used the brick walls as a main structural element in the design, but also she used it to compose this facade pattern. Those perforated facades help in controlling the building temperature as they allow natural ventilation and sunlight for the green pockets and glaze windows behind them. This pattern can be created in multiple ways in Revit, and I'll share with you my two favorite ways to do so, and at the end of the video I'll compare the two methods to each other so you can decide which method you prefer. The first method is column family with a nested generic family. Firstly, we need to analyze this pattern to its basic elements. Obviously, I'll start with the single brick, which will have a total width of 225 mm. Now, each time I move a 350 mm horizontally, another brick will be added. Those bricks will form the rows with odd numbers in the pattern. Now, for the rows with even numbers, also, each time I move a 350 mm, another brick will be added, but this time the whole row will be shifted by 175 mm away from the previous row. Now, based on this analysis, we can start modeling. First step, I'll open a new generic family, which I'll use to model the single brick inside. Firstly, I'll go to Create, then Extrusion, and here I'll sketch a rectangular with a dimension of 225 mm by 110 mm. Exit the sketch. I'll move the geometry to the center of the reference planes. Then I'll adjust the extrusion height to 75 mm. Lastly, I'll add a parameter for the material. I will call it Brick Material, for example. Make it an instant one and click OK. And the brick is done. Next step, open a new column family. I'll load the generic family we just created to the new column family. I'll line and lock the brick with the reference planes. I'll delete the rest of the reference planes as I don't need them. Select the brick and add a type parameter next to its material category. I'll call it a brick wall material. Click OK. Then uncheck the default option of automatically joining geometry to walls. Now I'll create the first row in the pattern by using array to repeat the brick horizontally. Make sure that the box near the group and associate option is checked and that the move to second option is chosen. Then move the block 350 mm. Now I'll create a new vertical reference plane, add a dimension between the two reference planes, then add a parameter to it. I'll call it wall width for example, then make it an instance one. Now we choose the array and add a parameter to it. I'll call it first row for example, then make it an instance one and click OK. Now I'll click on family type to create a formula that calculates the brick's total number from the wall width parameter value. The number of bricks for rows with odd numbers equals the wall width value minus the width of the first brick divided by 350 millimeter plus roughly half a module for the first brick we removed. I'll write this formula next to the first row parameter. Let's test the formula quickly. I'll move the reference plane by 350 mm a couple of times to see if the brick's number is following. All seems working. Now let's move to the front elevation to create the second row of the pattern. Choose one of the grouped bricks and copy it to the second row and then shift it 175 mm away from the first row beginning. Again click away 
and move the brick 350 mm. Choose the array and add a parameter to it. I'll call it second row. Make it instance and click OK. Now it's time to write a formula for the second row. The number of bricks for rows with even numbers equals the wall width value minus 400 millimeter divided by 350 millimeter plus roughly half a module. Now I'll write the formula next to the second row parameter. Let's do a quick test to see if the second row is following the changes in the wall width value. Let's move on. Now it's time to work on vertical array. Add a dimension between the upper and lower level and create a parameter to it. I'll give it the name height. Please note that this is a reporting parameter by default in the column family. That is why the instance and type options are not available. Leave it as it is and click OK. Now select all the bricks in the first row and array them vertically above the second row, which is 150 mm in this example. Select the array and create a parameter to it and call it as you like. I'll call it odd rows. Make it instance and click OK. Click on family types to add a formula for it, which equals the height value divided by 150 mm. Now select all the bricks in the second row and do exactly the same by repeating them vertically with the array command and then adding an instance parameter with a unique name to the array and lastly assigning a formula to it which equals the height parameter minus 75 millimeter which is the height of the first row divided by 150 millimeter. Now I'll save the family and load it to the project to test it. I'll align it to the building edge, then to this wall, then I'll increase its total width. I can also assign a material to the wall. I'll check the height in section view. And that's it for method one. Second method, system curtain wall with nested curtain wall panel and generic families. Back to diagram analysis. As the first method, I'll start with the single brick, but this time I'll copy it diagonally to create the second row. Then I'll repeat this basic shape multiple times horizontally and vertically to create the full pattern. First step, I'll go back to the generic family I made in the first method. From the front elevation, I'll copy the brick diagonally. I'll adjust the distance between the two bricks to make them overlap. I'll add a dimension and lock it. Then I'll move the whole geometry to centralize it with the reference planes. Next step is to open a new curtain wall panel family. Load the general family to the curtain panel family. Align the reference planes with the two bricks and lock them. I'll move to the elevation view. Align and lock the top and bottom reference planes to the two bricks. As the first method, I'll add a type parameter next to the material category. Save the family and give it a name as you like then load it to the project file. Now in the project file, create a curtain wall. I'll duplicate it so I can change its properties. Firstly, next to the curtain panel category, I'll choose the curtain wall panel I just created. Then for the vertical grid layout, I'll change it to fixed distance and give it the value of a 350 millimeter. For the horizontal grid, I'll also change it to fixed distance, but with a value of 150 mm. Lastly, I'll change all the vertical and horizontal mullions to none.
and the brick wall is ready. Let's test it in section view. I can modify its height, length, and the pattern will simply follow. I can also add a material to it by clicking tab to choose the curtain wall panel. Inside the edit type dialog box, I'll find the type parameter I created for the material. Everything seems working as planned. That's it for method two. Now it's comparison time. The curtain wall panel method is faster and easier to model. However, this method has a design limitation because it can only add or remove two modules at a time. This goes both way, horizontally and vertically. In the other hand, the column family method gives you the flexibility to move one module at a time, so it can work with whatever proportions you like. So generally speaking, I would say that if you can work with the curtain panel method without affecting your design, go for it. But if it is started to limit the design and changing your building proportions, go for the column family method. And here's the full elevation showing the brick wall pattern around the building. If you like the final result, please like the video and subscribe. Also, please comment down below which method you think it's better and why. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.